Besides, it's time for us to get this stupid show started anyway, isn't it? Hard Rock Lunch Box. Oh my God, what is up, everybody? Made it to yet another another Thursday, another Hard Rock Lunch Box. Man, I feel awful. I slept, I overslept, so it's like the opposite problem that I usually have, and I think I, think I feel worse. <laughs> I don't know. I gotta figure it out. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's got all the answers, but... If anyone's got all the answers, just, uh, yeah, hardrocklunchbox at gmail.com. Send all the answers there. I'll be sure to go through that. Man, I'm just, uh, I'm sorry again. I'll just keep apologizing every single Thursday for just how foggy and fuzzy I, I feel and seem to be. I, uh, yeah, I'm late. <laughs> like, I'm a minute late and everything, like, just... I was actually considering putting up a backdrop here, like one of those little folding Chinese thingies. Is it, can I say Chinese? Like, I don't know, Asian, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's one of those folding backdrops. I just, I'm so tired of actually just seeing the back of my messy studio (laughs) every time I do these things. Every time I do these videos, like I just, I gotta, I gotta start putting some quality into it. Am I, I got stuff on my shirt already. Oh, no, that's the logo. I thought I had a stain on my shirt. I've been having this thing where, like, with the extra weight, I'm just constantly spilling stuff on my shirt. I Now, to be fair, I'm assuming I was constantly spilling stuff before, but I wasn't fat enough that I would catch it all, so a lot of it probably hit the floor. So it's not that I'm, like, being no better like that, but, like, uh, I don't know. I <laughs> just... I'm falling apart, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm falling apart here. A little bit at a time. Every uh, every Thursday here on the Hard Rock Lunchbox. Um, but yeah, I was thinking like maybe a nice backdrop. You can't see this. I mean, you'll see this in two weeks on the Top 20. But like this whole area over here, just put... Like I have a little folding thing. You can kind of see it. Like it's right next to the GDAB poster. Right over there. There? No, there. And I could just put that up here and make that look a little better. I mean, I suppose we could do it now, but I don't feel like getting up. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely that kind of day. But uh, speaking of the top 20, uh, this week, this week's top 20 uh, is out as of this morning, as of midnight. And uh, it's the episode from August 5th. It's the box anniversary episode uh, where I basically thank all of you guys for making the box possible and stuff like that. Uh, but I also do talk about, it's the one where I'm talking about, like, good information and how to get it and how Mike and Jimmy were definitely, like, my good information source for the Suicide Squad and how there's a good source in your sphere of influence uh, for information for pretty much anything, any questions you have, and it's just important to make sure you do it. I thought it was a pretty good top 20, so feel free to check that out. That's on Strangerhood TV. Uh, plus, uh, over on Strangerhood TV, Bacon is My Podcast has seven questions with uh, Nick Aldis, I guess that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. He's a wrestler, and so not something I'm super, super familiar with. But I think we can all agree that the uh, that the main thing over at Strangerhood TV this week is my interview with Bacon is My Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently a very long-awaited interview. I didn't know that. <laughs> or highly anticipated. I didn't know that either. I will say it's an hour and a half long, and I am trying to listen to it because for some reason I don't remember all of the interview. And it's not its not a question of, uh, I mean, probably had like two drinks like over the course of like six hours. But it, that's why it is. It's like a long, its a, it was a long interview. It was like we were there for a very long time. And I think the reason I don't remember all of it is because it, most of it is just conversations with me, Mike, and Jimmy. And, like, most of our conversations, like, I don't want to say they aren't memorable, but they're just conversations. Like, you know, I don't I don't have a photographic memory for print. I don't have a photographic memory for exactly what was said. I recall a lot of stuff. Like, if you remind me of it or mention something, like, it'll remind me of something. But I don't necessarily remember everything that was said in six hours. I don't 
I know people do that. Uh, I, I am here to say that I am not one of them. But <laughs> there was a part uh, I was listening to. Like, it's taking me a really long time. So, like, really busy at work, but it's taking me a really long time to listen to the interview. But I was listening to some of it the <laughs> other night, and I had totally forgot about this conversation we had about deleting dead people from your phone. <laughs> like, And I don't want to give it away, but one of us, one of the three of us had a different idea of what you do than the other two. And the other two are not shocked, but were like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Why? <laughs> but I, I I recommend it highly. Uh, but, oh, I dropped my pen. Hold on. Man, I should not make that noise having to pick up a pen from the sitting position. Like, can we just all agree that this is just not... This is not going well for me. Like, this is... <laughs> I'm on the other side of the mountain, and I am coming down hard. But um, I did want to play something, because apparently... And I still haven't found this to be true, but apparently last week, because the seven, My 7 Questions with Bacon is My Podcast came out, and somehow I disrespected the chat, which I don't think is true. I never disrespect the chat. I ignore the chat... And I only ignore the chat because I'm working. Like, I'm literally working here. And I can barely do this. Can you imagine me having to read what's effectively a tale of two cities going on in the chat right now? No, of course not. Yeah, lobsters aren't candy. Of course, right? Never going to lose my train of thought from that. (laughs) But apparently, I disrespected the chat. I don't think that's true. And if it is, I think... Uh, you know, maybe the chat needs to go to uh, oversensitivity training. I don't know. I, I don't know. But I pulled a specific clip that I thought was important. Jimmy was asking me about the Hard Rock Lunchbox and uh, what we affectionately refer to as Team Uppity and how it's just such a, like a great thing. Um, and it is. And I've said for ages, like, how grateful I am. But anybody listens to this show, let alone kind of regularly. But I really like the newest inter- iteration. Because I've had a couple of iterations where the, the chat really just kind of takes on its own life. This one, <clears throat> this is, this iteration is absolutely, and by far and away, <laughs> the, the most autonomous, like, I should be afraid that computers are coming to life and take over. Like, this is that. And that's, and that's... I am not disrespecting the chat. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to compliment you. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> so Jimmy was saying like how great it is, and he was uh, he was trying to give me credit for it basically. And uh, I I stood up for you guys, and I'm going to play you that clip right now. But this is part of the interview. I strongly, if you have, you know what? I'll just play the clip before I get in more trouble. So this is this is me explaining how the chat actually works. Like you've yeah. got this group that, that every week is like, I want to know what you think. I want to know what you're about. I want to know what you're doing. Well, right? I, want, I want to clear up something real quick because they'll be the first to point this out. Like, I don't have shit. I don't have any. <laughs> I don't have a group. Like, they are a group <laughs> right? and they have found the show. Like, and to their well, credit, they, they, have, they have formed their own group yeah. within the show. I and, and I've watched that. it happen. I get that. But they're without, not mine. I'm we, a legal guardian. No, but, but they, I can sign permission slips, they, but not they're not there, right? But, <laughs> right? Which I feel like is the agreement that we've had this whole time. <laughs> like, we were playing a show once, uh, and now we're getting technical. <laughs> we played a show once. Uh, I think it was in Seaside, so it was probably the Jersey Shore Festival. Don't remember. I think so. We were playing at Hook's Bar, which is a really big, big place, like as a bar goes in the Jersey, on the Jersey Shore. And we were playing, and just like the Jersey Shore Festival is weird. It was definitely a Jersey Shore Festival. It's definitely weird because they, um, so it's like, I don't know, 10 clubs, bars, 10 bars. Let's be, let's be honest. It's 10 bars. And, uh, there's free music going on everywhere. 
right? So most of the people that are in town, because it's the weekend before Memorial Day, so typically, <clears throat> so it's not like just your typical beach weekends. It's the weekend before that. Uh, so most of the people there are musicians. <coughs> Excuse me. Most of the people in, in town are musicians or musicians adjacent, like real solid music fans, uh, fans of in particular, like individual bands. But the reason it's you know so great for somebody like me is because like I know a lot of bands, so it's really great for me to be able to see them all in one place and just go from one place to another to another. So, uh, but so there, there usually is no crowd that's just like huge. I mean, we've been lucky over the years. Like when we play EJs and stuff, like we usually get a really good slot, and it tends to be a little bit later. And it's after a lot of other bands have played, so a lot of other bands are done for the night, and they just come and hang out with us. So, like, I'm super grateful for all those slots we get. But this was not one of those years. We were playing a little bit earlier, and we were playing at Hooks, and um, so we're playing the show. I think we, I think we're like one song in. And then, like, 30 people walk in the door, and they were all all dressed like Blues Brothers, like, if you've ever seen that movie or that bit. Um, yeah, like, so, like, 20 or 30 of them, I think it was closer to 30, all dressed, white shirts, you know, black pants or skirts or whatever, sunglasses, like a hat, and they were just doing a thing. It was, like, kind of like a flash mob, but not a flash mob, like, they were just, they... They, I don't. I never even found out what the deal was, but they came in and they like were just dancing and stuff. Which Rebel Nine is not the easiest band to dance to, but it can be done. And it was a short set, like thirty minutes. So if they came in like first or second song, like we probably only had like six more songs. So we played a lot of up. We usually play a lot of up upbeat songs and up tempo songs. So um, that was good. And I, we were closing with another mistake. And I remember saying uh, right before the end, like if you guys want to dance like i have a song for you and they were like cool play it. you know so we ended up closing with another mistake it went over really really well but then just as fast as they came in um they left and i felt really bad for the band right after us i mean it really i've had that happen a couple of times it has nothing to do with us at all you know if anything it's our ability to keep an audience that's that kind of like because if i had played a slow song right there they would have left and i know that and i would not have let the band do that but um so it just worked out. Like, we've had that a couple times in the city where, like, groups of people just walk in. We've had it the other way, where groups of people walk in right after we play or other stuff. But I did, I felt really bad for the band after us because it, it sucks. We've, most bands have been there where you've just watched an audience walk out. I mean, like, I just, I don't know. Back in, back in the day before we had won over any Craving Strange fans, like, that used to happen to us all the time. Like, people, like, literally, like, while we're being introduced people would be like putting their jackets on and be like okay i gotta get out of here like i gotta get out of here before the band starts playing like wow like that's awesome like it's just (sighs) anyway so my point is is that that group of people that came to see us they weren't our fans they weren't our group they were just their their own existence of thing they were their own thing and they were just circling around and jimmy later in the interview refers to how those are people in, you know, like, my orbit. And I think that that's probably fair. Like, I am doing a thing. Like, I'm doing a thing. Like, I'm doing a thing. And every week, this group just kind of rocks into my orbit for a little while. And I think that that's that's awesome. And I think that that's accurate and all that other stuff. I just, again, want to say thank you again to all you guys to do that. I am not a man without a hat. I have... I have ha- I gotta get a ha- I have not had a haircut. I have not had a haircut since 2019, and it is. I thought it was because of COVID, uh, but it is because of laziness, which apparently way worse. No vaccine for. And uh, I really I want to cut it. I, w- I don't want to cut it like the last time I cut it really short. I cut it too short, and like I have all this video and. Um, all these pictures because we played like a revolution show like pretty soon after that and it was so short because my hair okay so my hair is shorter my hair is actually curly quite wavy uh, because of the length of it it ends up being kind of straight but like I remember I have all these pictures and all these videos of my hair being short like to my shoulders but the moment I would sweat it would just curl right up so it looked really short like real like almost a bowl cut short so I gotta be careful to not do that again and the woman that <laughs> Excuse me, has cut my hair 
for years is no longer cutting hair, so I've got a new person i got to go to, and it's just, I'm, just, I'm just lazy, and I don't feel like doing it. But yeah, because of that, I wear a hat most times, because it just, I don't know, I don't like the way it looks, which is funny, like, right, I just, if I'm going to have my hair up in a ponytail all the time, like, what literally is the point of having long hair? Like, it's just, it's stupid. Like, and I don't know why I still have long hair, I just do. I mean, I know lately it's because I feel like if I cut it really short, all it's going to really do is accentuate my giant fat face. And I don't want to do that because that sounds like a bad idea. It's not the direction I really want to go in. <sighs> That's sad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so you should check out the interview, the Bacon is My Podcast interview with me because it's, it's really... It's good, and and the boys did like research on me, and I answered questions that I haven't answered uh, ever or in years, and uh, I just thought it was fun. Thought it was funny. People uh, have over the years wondered what it's like when uh, the three of us get together and just shoot the shit. Well, this is your best chance to kind of see what that looks like, and finally, finally understand that it's really not that big of a deal. It's just three buds just hanging out, talking shop talking about whatever we want that's but that's kind of what's cool about it and the fact that it can just last as long as it does is just it's just funny so i don't know when my next appearance on bacon is my podcast will be i expect my next appearance would probably probably be as a guest host which uh would be fun i think i just don't know if it would be good but there's uh only really the one way to find out So before we get done with our top 20 today, I do want to have a, uh, a, a quick check-in with uh, Ron DeSantis from Florida. <laughs> it's so funny. I, I saw this article ye- yesterday. I think it was from the Associated Press. And the, the person that wrote it has so much bias. Like, he's very pro-DeSantis. And it's just funny because I see a lot of... The other side, I see a lot of like anti DeSantis, anti DeSantis, anti sis. <laughs> you know, like when you see like pro Trump stuff and anti Trump stuff, I just I don't expect to see it often in, in Associated Press. And it was all done like within the commas, like you know. But of course he didn't, you know, and of course he wouldn't, stuff like that. And it's like okay, but like here's the deal, like DeSantis' thing, like in Florida, like he's so he's still banning mask mandates, even as you know hospitalizations start to rise. Like there's really. It, I, it just, it just seems silly. Like he, he's very anti other, you know, COVID m- mitigation factors, but he's been pushing Regeneron for ages. That's one of the things he said. Like everybody should just get Regeneron. Just go get it. The thing of it is, you can't just go get it, right? Like it's, 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 it's a medicine. You have to be prescribed it. They aren't actively prescribing it, and it, it helps with COVID if you get it within the first. It's really three days, but if you can get it within the first 10 days at all, it really is very effective at mitigating the symptoms. It doesn't really do much for the disease itself, but it's really good at mitigating the symptoms. And if you can get it, that's great. I mean, Greg Abbott, governor of Texas, is on it right now. When Trump got COVID, that's what they put him on immediately. Like, yeah, this is really great if you have direct access to health care, uh, the money to pay for it, or good enough insurance to pay for it, and your locality can stock it and has it right these are not these are not like it's it's not like some weird yeah you know hollywood housewives botulism party for botox sorry not botulism Uh, it's not it's not that like it can be done like i think if i got covid i think i would go to the hospital and be like hey man can i get regeneron and they'd be like your insurance sucks so you can just die out in the hall like maybe I, i don't really know but the point of it is, is that it has to be done really, really quickly. And so it's not, it has not been looked at as a viable solution for the masses. It's a viable solution for the middle class and above. Just fine. But so they found out yesterday, or released yesterday, that the top donor to DeSantis' campaign, I don't remember his name, but he works for a company called Citadel. Citadel is the main, main shareholder in... Regeneron. 
Now, that's not a smoking gun in any sense of the word. It isn't. And lots of people are invested in lots of stuff, and lots of people give money. And the dude from Citadel, he was like, you know, I give to lots of people, lots of conservatives and stuff like that. And that's all true. The problem is, if you're promoting a drug that actively is making you money, you need to say something. <laughs> like, nobody's faulting you for having your top donor be a supporter of it. Everyone's faulting you for not saying anything about it. That is a conflict of interest, unless you're up front with it. I just thought that was a little interesting, and I wanted to throw that out. And I had a couple other things to talk about, but I'm tired now, so <laughs> I'm not going to do that. And it feels like I've done my 20 minutes, and I'm going to go check in on the chat because I don't want to ignore them any longer. That's how important they are to me. Besides, it's time for us to get this stupid show started anyway, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I got a lot of new music, like lots and lots and lots of new music. So I'm going to be playing some of it for you today. But this one I, I picked up. It's, uh, it looks like the new song from that band, Bad Flower, who I was playing the FO out of like a couple of weeks ago. I really, really dig it. Really, really dug them on that song. And I really, really dig uh, on this song. And uh, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just going to shut up. Here's Bad Flower on the box. <laughs> 